it's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this DevOps situation, you are helping with the design of an e-commerce application. The web application receives web requests and stores sales transactions in a database. A batch job runs every hour to trigger analysis of sales numbers, available inventory, and forecasted sales numbers. You want to identify minimal service level indicators, or SLIs, for the application to ensure that forecasted numbers are based on the latest sales numbers. Which SLIs should you set for the application? The key parts of this requirement are that there is a web application. Via the web application, data about sales transactions at the store are stored in the database. Every hour, a batch job is going to run that is going to create a bunch of reports. We have to ensure that the reports generated and the forecasted numbers in them are based on the latest sales numbers. To do this now, we have to identify the minimal service level indicators. Now there are a whole bunch of them and we shall go through each of them and figure out if they qualify to be a good SLI or not. Before we do that, let's define what a service level indicator is. It is a carefully defined quantitative measure of some aspect of the level of service that is provided. So it has to be quantitative. It has to be fairly easily measurable. It also has to have a direct relationship with an aspect of the service that the stakeholder or the user for this particular service is going to see. So there has to be a causal relationship between what you're measuring and its usefulness for the user itself. To take a few good indicators or qualities of an SLI, we would have these SLI, SLIs be not too many, but not too few either. We want to have a few indicators judicially, judiciously selected that would have a direct bearing on what we're trying to measure. It should be representative of the system's health. Like I said, it has to be a causal relationship between what we are measuring and what the user is witnessing. We would ideally also like to have standardized measures so that every person who sees this particular SLI doesn't have to go figure out what exactly they're trying to do, what exactly they're trying to measure. So this would be a great to have. But just these as a guiding principles, let's figure out of the list that we have, which ones are good indicators and which ones are not good SLIs. The first one, web application quality. Now, how do we define quality? What does it mean to different people? For the user, say, is it the speed with which the data comes back? Is it what the interface looks like? Is it how quickly data is stored and retrieved? There could be multiple things that define what is quality. And there is no direct measure of quality itself. We could define it in different ways. Different teams might differ it, uh, uh, define it differently. For the front-end team, it might be something else. For the back-end team, it might be something else. For the database team, it might be something else. In general, quality is a very fuzzy measure, which is not quantitative, it is more qualitative. It is more subjective. There is also, therefore, not a shared understanding of what is quality. Though we know what is quality in general, each team might have a different definition of it. It is also not easily instrumental. Of course, if you have some equation or definition of what is quality, you could have multiple indicators that eventually compute quality, 
but as such quality itself is not a computable easily instrumentable value in fact this was one of the main options that i could clearly eliminate because of the nature of what is quality so on this one i'm very strong um and very sure that this would be a wrong answer therefore i'm going to definitely eliminate this what about database availability is it easy to measure yes it's a standard measurement of when you make a request to a database is it able to process that right is it available for you to access that is it going to be relevant for the user yes for the person using the uh, ui uh, doing the transactions but not only that for the data to be available in the database when the transaction is done so that later somebody can look at the report we need the database to be available even for the web app so the web app will require db connectivity to be there every time a transaction is done so availability is going to be an important factor what about for the batch jobs absolutely if the batch jobs have to be run the db has to be available we are going to process probably a large amount of data and we require the database to be available so for me this is a fairly strong yes but the thing with with choosing a yes option is that we cannot immediately say yes and tick it off because there might be a better answer later on when there's a no i can clearly eliminate it but when it's a yes i have to bank it for now right there might be a better option later so we'll bank this one and move on to the next one batch job coverage what is coverage that we are covering all the data in the database that does not make sense we don't want all the data right we want some of the data that is latest there might be historical data going back many many years and that might be completely irrelevant so in terms of requiring it for the forecast it is not relevant at all but also in terms of the clarity and whether it's a standardized definition coverage doesn't fit in there so typically for storage you might have options or standard uh, um service level indicators like latency availability and durability but coverage is not really in there right because we might choose to run the queries over only one set of the data and not the entire database so for me batch job coverage is a definite no and i'm going to surely eliminate this option how about web application latency is a standardized measure absolutely we can measure when the request was received at the back end and when we returned the data we can also do it at the client side though it will be a little more work it's still measurable so as a standardized measure it's a thumbs up is it relevant for the user now the latency of the web application is not going to have a huge impact on the batch jobs that are run and for the analysts who are looking at the forecasted numbers so this particular system has multiple users there's the front end user and there are the users of the uh, reports the key people we are focusing on this case are the consumers of the reports the web application having a higher latency is not going to have a direct impact on the hourly batch jobs that are going to run over the sales numbers so even though this is okay on some factors on some other factors it's not very strong therefore i'm going to put this in the bucket where i would eliminate it later on if there was a better option how about database latency is a standardized measure absolutely it's easy to check when we have made a request to the database and when it comes back and ideally we want the latency to be very low especially when running large batch jobs we could have a humongous amount of data and we want these reports to happen very quickly if possible 
if for example a one batch job runs for more than an hour it is going to actually delay the jobs that are going to come in the next hour so that wouldn't be good at all and therefore we would like our database queries to run very fast will it have a relevance for the user absolutely the quicker they can get the reports the better so database latency is a yes for me and i'm going to keep that in bucket for later to evaluate against all the others that will also be yes how about batch job throughput what is throughput how much data is processed is that a standardized measure yes it is for storage systems throughput would be a good service level indicator especially for large systems for big data systems throughput will be very important because we ideally want to cover probably terabytes or petabytes of data as part of our queries it is measurable and a standardized measure well understood therefore that's a thumbs up is it important for the consumer of these reports absolutely yes the more data that we can process which is essentially the throughput in a given time then it is better for the consumer of the report to see those reports quickly and greater the throughput more data is processed and you get it potentially quicker if the database latency is also very low so in this case this is also a yes for me for the batch job throughput would be a good service level indicator How about web application availability? Now we did talk about multiple users for the system. There is the uh, group that is doing the transaction, and there is the group that is consuming the reports. Now our main user for this requirement are the consumers of the report, not the person doing the transactions. However, unless the user is able to do the transaction the data is not going to enter the system which can then create the report so all systems have correctness as a service level indicator right unless the data is correct the rest of it is probably useless it doesn't matter that the data comes back very quickly if it is completely wrong so correctness will be a requirement for every system unless you have the web application being available such that the transaction can be done and the store sales transaction can enter the database then the reports are going to be uh, faulty so to get the appropriate correct forecasted numbers you need to have the right data in the system and unless the web application is available you can't get the data in the system so in terms of both the standardized measure and the correctness of the data for me this is also a strong yes web application availability is important batch job freshness what is freshness freshness is typically the time it takes to collect data process it and present the data back to whoever wants it in this case a key requirement is that we have to ensure that forecasted numbers are based on the latest sales numbers so if we got data right now but we are processing only much later on our correctness of the system would be wrong therefore it is very important for the user in this requirement that we have data that is fresh we have to be able to collect the data process it and present it quickly such that the consumers of the report have the latest numbers so for me the freshness of the data coming out of the batch job is going to be very important we already saw this one about web application availability and quality availability it's standardized it's measurable and it is very useful however quality is it's a custom definition depending on the team depending on what you're trying to achieve it is not directly measurable and it is kind of fuzzy in its definition 
So anything in web application quality is out for me. How about database durability? Durability ensures that once a transaction is complete, it is persistently stored. Even if the system goes down after the transaction is complete, when it comes back up, you shouldn't have lost the data. And this is very important for databases, of course. Can we measure it? Of course we can, right? Durability will be a standard measure for databases. But even though it is important for databases, that is really not what we are testing over here. Right? We assume that databases have this property of durability. We are not going to check every single subsystem. If that was the case, we'll have to check the correctness of the chip that is being processed. Is the memory being, uh, being allocated right? Is it working right? Those are probably not concerns that are useful at our level. Right? That goes way deeper down and we have to assume that those systems have also have SLIs that are managed and they give you the correct answer um, to you know whatever uh, SLOs or SLAs are provided by those systems. So in this case, even though database durability is important in general, it is not a direct indicator of what the user is going to see. So in, for this option, which is database durability, the relevance for the user is a thumbs down. Right? It's not important in this requirement. Given all of that, now we've got a list of what are good SLIs and what are probably not good SLIs and some that are definitely not good in the list. Comparing that with all the options now, A and D are easy to eliminate because they've got web application quality. When I saw this question, those are the first two eliminated because quality is in general not a good SLI. It is not a direct indicator of anything at all. Having eliminated those two, we can see that for the option B, web application latency is not a very strong measure in this case. Even though database latency and batch job throughput, I feel are strong measures. And of course, another person evaluating this might have a different opinion on some of these. But for me, in option B, web application latency does not have a direct causal relationship with the requirement in this case, which is to create timely reports with the latest data that is fresh. Option C covers web application availability. The database also has to be available and the output of the batch job has to have the latest data, which indicates the freshness. Considering all of that, option C is my best choice. All right. Now it's time for you to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Go ahead, do that right now. Because there's loads of great content coming up for learning Google Cloud and preparing for the certifications.